Welcome to Riverview Park and Zoo. Today I'm going to take you on a little tour of the exhibits that are in the Education Center, including the African Reptile Exhibit, which has our African Plated Lizards, our Royal Pythons, the West African Dwarf Crocodile Exhibit, which features our crocodiles, and the Sulawesi Forest Turtle Exhibit, Okay, welcome to the African Reptile Exhibit. I'm in here with a couple different species. Right here in front of us, we can see an African plated lizard. They're native to Eastern and Southeastern Africa, known as the uh, Sudan plated lizard as well. They're typically 30 to 70 meters or 11 to 27 inches long. These guys are you know, normally pretty quiescent, but they can move very fast when they want to. Here beside me, to the right. And that's the other species we're going to be talking about today, which is the ball python. But I'll come back to them in a second. Um, plated lizards typically very active during the day. Sometimes they will get aggressive with one another to defend their territory will not usually bite when threatened and would rather use its plated tail in defense. As an escape tactic, the plated lizard will run a distance then suddenly halt with its tail raised to confuse the pursuer. It will also wedge itself into a crevice to escape a predator. They typically live in underground tunnels, which it sometimes will share with a snake or a mongoose, which is kind of interesting to see it sitting here beside the ball python. Bald pythons generally do not grow to more than about 1.2 meters in length or about 4 feet, although some specimens have reached as long as 1.8 meters, but that's very rare. Females tend to be slightly bigger than males, and both of our ball pythons here at the park and zoo are females. Kind of unusual to see these guys out in the open like this. Um, they typically enjoy hiding in underneath the rocks and stuff, so it's kind of a special treat. I'll just move over here and show you the other one. You can see she is a little, little shy. You can actually see how she's kind of wedging herself between the basket and the wall there. They'll sometimes do that when we try and handle them. They'll actually do a really good job of preventing you from pulling them out. You can see that this snake here is in the middle of a shed with her outside skin flaking a little bit. Typically they are black or dark brown with light brown or gold sidings. Uh, the belly tends to be white or cream in color. These guys can live in captivity up to, well, typically about 20 to 30 years although uh, they have lived much older in captivity on occasion. We think the lifespan out in the wild is about 10 years, um, which is uh, mostly due to predation. Now pythons, uh, ball pythons included, are constrictors, which means that they grab and then uh, subdue their prey and kill them by constriction. Now, interestingly enough, uh, some people are under the impression that this means that uh, pythons or constrictors in general don't strike. And that is, in fact, not correct. Uh, constrictors strike very similarly to venomous snakes. Um, however, uh, they don't have the large fangs that some venomous snakes do. They tend to have small teeth that are pointed back towards the back of their mouth, which is really good for grabbing a hold of and holding on to their prey. Snakes are pretty remarkable in that when they strike, they strike so fast, it's only about a quarter of the time it takes a human being to blink, which is really remarkable. Their heads accelerate at up to about 50 G's or 50 gravities of acceleration, and they don't suffer any physiological impairment from that. By comparison, a human being, a really fit pilot in their 20s or 30s with a special suit, can only pull 8 or 9 G's for a few seconds, and then they start to black out.
So I think that's all for now from the African reptile exhibit. We'll say goodbye to our friends, the plated lizards. And the ball pythons. This is Erwin. She is our female. We also have a male. His name is Lyle. And as you can see, they're in one of our exhibits up here at our education center. Oftentimes, uh, dwarf crocodiles will be found in the water. So if you don't see them in the water, is a really great place to look. But if you come on a nice, bright, sunny day, they will be found basking in the windows, taking in all that beautiful sunlight. Uh, today we are feeding them chicks, um, so beautiful fuzzy little chicks, it seems to be one of their favorite things that they enjoy eating. Um, they also eat pellets that are specifically designed for crocs, as well as other types of chicken and meat. Um, but in general, chicks, I would say, would be their favorite. And uh, often we feed them about three times a week. Welcome to the Sulawesi Forest Turtle Exhibit. The Sulawesi Forest Turtle is a very rare turtle uh, known to inhabit the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. Uh, they're critically endangered. They think there are fewer than 100 of them left in the wild. Right now we're looking at a female and a male, and I think that's another female on the end of the log. The males are noticeably different from the females with their yellow coloring to their heads and faces. So easy forest turtles grow up to about 24 or 28 centimeters in length. That's about nine and a half to 11 inches long. Um, not a lot is known about these guys as far as their behavior and their reproduction. Uh, they were only discovered in 1995 and there hasn't been a lot of uh, research done as far as their behavior in the wild. Here at the park and zoo, the Sulawesi forest turtles are fed a fruit mixture that typically contains melons, strawberry, kiwi, peach, plum grapes, mushrooms, papaya, mango, banana, and other fruits, along with the lettuce mixture containing kale and romaine lettuce. As I mentioned before, these guys are critically endangered in the wild, and their primary causes of this are um, habitat loss, but also illegal exportation or uh, poaching for food. We've had two successful hatchings here, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, given that these guys only lay one egg and sometimes two at a time, uh, it is fairly uh, notable. Also, we believe we're only one of about five organizations in North America that has had success in the breeding of these turtles.